with James riding out in North Vancouver Island. I've been having a great time this week visiting some really cool people on the island here. I know a couple weeks ago I was on the South Vancouver Island, uh, Victoria area. Uh, this time I was in Nanaimo, Parksville, Port Alberni, Comox, Courtney, and Campbell River. And now this area it's very, very cool. It's like there's a there's a stripe near the coast of civilization. And deep within the island, it's just mountains and green and beautiful spaces, beautiful green, wet, west coast kind of terrain. Very rugged. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is myths. Uh, because I've been seeing so many people, people look online and there's so much information out there um, and some of it's amazing and some of it's maybe not so amazing. But um, from my years of experience, I wanted to dispel some of the myths that you know are, are out there. And I just wanted to mention too, if there's anything that, that we say here that doesn't make sense, if you have some, some something to, to refute, Please put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Let us know. Maybe uh, maybe I read something wrong. Maybe I've seen something wrong. Um, let me know. But I'm dispelling myths today. So let's go dispel some myths, okay? All right. Myth number one is about stainless steel. Now, a lot of people think that when you use a CO2 laser to mark stainless steel, that it's forever, and uh, it doesn't. It's not true. You mark stainless steel with a metal marking compound, and it's not gonna be forever. It's not gonna be forever, guys. What happens is the laser goes over top of the metal marking compound, which is attached to the stainless steel, and it opens up the pores of the stainless steel. It also melts or vitrifies the metal marking compound. Now this metal marking compound is usually made out of like silicates and ceramic dust. Uh, this stuff melts or vitrifies, uh, turns to glass uh, under the heat of the laser. And that liquid, it permeates the pores of the stainless steel. Now, this all happens in the blink of an eye uh, because it comes up, opens the pores, melts, vitrifies, puts it into the pores, and then it hardens back again into a nice hard substance. So what you're getting is about five microns of bond between the melted ceramic, or now it's kind of like glass, and the stainless steel. Now let's Imagine what five microns might look like. A micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. So there's a thousand microns in a millimeter. Five of these are the bond between stainless steel and the metal marking compound. Now, that's great if you're just gonna have it sitting there, uh, but when people are always rubbing it, touching it, or if it's under heat or under stress of any kind, there is going to be some wear for sure. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this one up is because today I was in a hotel and somebody had used a metal marking compound with a CO2 in a elevator for the elevator's serial number uh, and it was worn off. Uh, and so this could have been avoided uh, by probably using a fiber laser to etch the stainless steel. Once you use a fiber laser, you're actually digging in. There's actual real depth to the engraving. Use a fiber laser, mark the stainless steel, color fill it afterwards if you'd like. And this would have been avoided because when people are in elevators, they get bored and they start to get touchy. And uh, they get getting, no, 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 guys, they get touchy with the objects in the elevator, not the people. 
You don't have to worry about getting into elevators, seriously. Okay? So, the stainless steel metal marking compound, not forever, but it's really, really good. Okay? Just know that it's excellent for most applications. If you really want it a forever thing, you go with a fiber laser, like a Speedy Flex laser, you get the CO2 and the fiber. Go for that if you want a permanent metal marking. Okay, here's another one. A lot of people say to me that you can't engrave on a mug, a cylinder. You can't do it twice. So let's say if you uh, engrave it and it didn't quite get through the coating or, or the surmark didn't quite take, um, you can't do it twice. Uh, the, I'm happy to tell you, yes you can. Uh, in the olden days, when people used to use the wheel type of rotary tool, and Trotec still sells the, the wheel type, although I never offer it to my customers, um, we use the cones, and the cones will hold your mug or your glass or your cylinder in place while it engraves. And so the precision of this rotary tool on the Trotec allows you to engrave it and it goes back and if you inspect it before you take it out you actually can go over it one more time and engrave it again and again and again and again and again another myth centered around lasers and engraving is that laser tubes use up co2 as a fuel now i actually thought this for the first few years of my career uh, but quickly found out this is very very wrong you see a co2 laser doesn't actually use co2 for fuel co2 uh, is a particle floating around it's a, it's a gas it's an invisible gas you can't see it uh, it floats around inside the tube and what happens is there's radio waves if you will bombarding the little particles, the poor little particles of CO2, and like a balloon, these radio waves are going to blow up the electrons that are floating around this, this atom of CO2, and they're gonna expand, they're gonna jump to a higher state, and then they come crashing down. When they crash down, they let go of a light photon. And that light photon, he happily shoots away. Light photons love to follow other light photons. They like to go in the same direction. Light photons start bouncing back and forth inside the tube. And there's a lot more that happens inside the tube, obviously. But what I'm saying is that we're using CO2 as a means to make radio waves into light photons. This is real science stuff here. Uh, maybe I should pick up Bill Nye. He could be hanging out on the road down here somewhere. But what I'm trying to say, the CO2 does not get used up. Now, so how does a tube leak? Why, you know, we say, oh, uh, our ceramic tubes uh, have a very hard time leaking and, you know, our, our life of our tubes lasts so much longer. Well, let me explain why we say this. In a regular tube, let's say a, a glass laser tube, a glass laser tube is going to, there's lots of points on it where you can leak. There's lots of seals, rubber seals and stuff like this that, that can leak. So it's, a, it's a very poor way of containing the CO2. Uh, they got it a little better with the metal laser tubes like you might find on a North American made machine. But still, there are welds that are not perfectly sealed. There are fissures where some of this gas can escape. And then we have the rubber seals. And over time, these rubber seals are gonna change, especially when, when the machine's heated up, cooled down, heated up, cooled down. On an air-cooled air -cooled machine, heated up, cooled down, heated up, cooled down. This is where you start to get fissures and cracks where air can, can get at it. So what we don't want is to you know, keep those things hot and then cold. So we have rubber seals, welds, cracks. These things leak the laser gas out of the tube, uh, rendering the tube useless after a while. So a lot of people are putting hours on tubes. I was at a trade show and walking around asking different 
manufacturers about you know what you know how many hours are your tubes and it's, it's strange people have such a different variety of hours on tubes I mean, one person could say 20,000 hours one person could say 5,000 hours and you know what happens is when you're operating at a constant temperature and you're always exciting this gas in a, in a, say a glass tube then of course it's going to last a very very long time when you're constantly cooling it down heating it up cooling it down heating it up turning on and off or keeping it off and not exciting the gas you're going to have a lot less hours so I think that, that sometimes when they're making these, these hours up for some of these tubes, they're switching a tube on and hitting shoot, and they're just leaving it and counting how many hours it actually takes for that tube to leak out all of its gas. And because it's on all the time, it's, it's active all the time, it's not going to leak out as much. So using your tube, you're going to have a lot more uh, life out of it. So Trotec We've created a ceramic core tube. It's fused together. There's no rubber seals. There's no welds. These are just two fused blocks of ceramic with the gas in inside. So I have yet to figure out how long one of these tubes is going to last uh, because they last so long. So um, you know we can we can talk about that uh, in a in a later episode. You know what what is the the real life of a of a tube. Uh, once I found out, I'll let you know. Uh, so far, we have uh, ceramic core tubes out there that six, eight years old and, and still going strong. So, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll know when the time comes how long we expect these things to last. Okay, another myth here is that you can cut Sintra and engrave Sintra on a, a laser. Um, I want to stop you right there. Sintra is made out of PVC. Uh, most of you people who are watching this, who are engravers, know you can't engrave or cut PVC because it turns into a chlorine acid gas, which turns into hydrochloric acid gas when it mixes with the moisture in the air. Uh, this is toxic to yourself, uh, corrosive to the machine. It just is the caustic gas. Um, Sintra is made of PVC not a great thing to cut. I once um, cut some before I knew about this. This is a long time ago. And, and got opened the lid and a cloud came up into my face. Uh, I breathed it in and had like asthma for uh, at least a week. So it was bad news. Um, don't cut or process any PVC inside your laser, please. Or Sintra, I should say. And PVC. Okay, another myth is that deeper engraving is better, especially on plastic. And this one drives me crazy because I'll go into a, a restaurant or something and there'll be a plastic sign on the, on the door. As engravers, for all you new guys out there, you don't do it yet, but all the other engravers out there, you're always touching the engraving, trying to see you know, how it was made or something like this. And you see a 1 16th piece of plastic with a, a 132nd inch engraving into it, just brutalized by whatever engraver they're using, whether it's a laser or a rotary. And it's been, it's been just hit so hard and the chunks taken out of it. Um, that's not great engraving, guys. Deep, deep is not good. Deeper is not better. Um, train, train your customers for this because uh, you gotta just get that top layer of plastic off revealing the layer underneath without any cloudy color in the bottom layer and the contrasting layer. Same goes for wood too. You don't need to go through half the piece of wood. You just need good contrast and just a slight feel on it. You go too deep, you create too much resin on top of your part and it, it clouds the, the surface. Um, same with really any material. You don't need to get in deep. I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but really guys, Keep it low and keep it clean. And that's the expert way. Another myth about the engraver is that some people think that the laser engraver uses up a whole bundle of energy. Because they see this, this laser, it's a laser, it's gotta use lots of energy, right? Well, I'm happy to report that an 80 watt laser 
running six hours a day with a fan will use up no more than two dollars and sixty cents every day of power that's in british columbia um i don't know what other provinces uh, or states power consumption rates are but uh in british columbia this is what it takes to run the laser for one whole day so take that to the bank when I'm doing demos for people who've never used lasers before, um, they look at me and say, do I need special eye protection? Um, is this light harmful to my eyes? Um, so I always have to dispel this, this myth. Um, we have a lens cover, it's, it's the lid for our lasers, and these lids are in place to protect our eyes. Now. The brightness you see from there is, is usually plasma coming off of a, a part. It's turning the material into, into energy, if you will. The light itself is, is not harmful. There's nothing's going to be shooting through the lid into your eyes. The reason we have these lids, and on the CO2 lid, it's a clear or a blue lid, and on the fiber laser, we have the, the green lids. Um, this is more than enough to block the harmful rays reflecting off of whatever you're engraving and shooting into your eyes so there is no big deal if you were to somehow operate a laser engraver uh, maybe you've bought a laser engraver that is a class 4 now you do need the eye protection so we have our um, our speed markers uh, we can have them with the case or without the case the uh, the speed mark 1 100 uh, has no case and so it's a class 4 laser so you need very very special eye goggles you need these the, the green lenses uh, to protect you, your eyes it's very very important a class 2 laser nah, no problem like our speed series no problem the minute you use the, the pass through on our speedy 400 it becomes class 4 officially so then you are required to wear some eye goggle during pass-through mode on the Speedy 400. Just wanted to add that. All right, that's all the myths. I want you guys to send some of your myths in. If you guys have some, some myths that you've dispelled, uh, maybe we can help some more people around this planet, uh, you know, not have to learn it for themselves as well. Um, so feel free, send them on in, post them in the comments. Uh, if you do have comments about the show, or you want to see something, or you just want to ask a question, please put them in the comments below. I also want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. What this does is it allows you to see when the show is being broadcast to you. This is like a radio show, and so we don't have a specific time that we're on, so you can't plan your day around it. So why not just get a, a notification? Listen, sign up would be the best thing you've ever done. <laughs> All right, ciao for now, guys.